Welcome to Electron Line. In order to show you the versatility of this method, the Lagrangian method, we're going to do the pendulum example again, but in a different fashion. Notice here that if the pendulum is swinging back and forth, it has a tangential velocity called V, but we can separate that velocity into its X and Y components. Since the kinetic energy can be written as follows, kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, and we know that v squared must be equal to v sub x squared plus v sub y squared. Using Pythagorean theorem, we can then say that this can be written as 1 half times the mass times the quantity v in the x direction squared plus v in the y direction squared. Now we can also express the position of the pendulum in terms of x and y. Now the x position here, that would simply be the length of the pendulum times the sine of the angle theta. So we can say that the x position is equal to the length L times the sine of theta. And of course I shouldn't use the big L, I should use small L so we don't confuse it with the L of the Lagrangian. Okay, and then here again, instead of using the big L, I probably want to use the small L like that. That's better. Notice that the position in the y direction is equal to the height, which could be expressed in terms of this length right here minus this length right here, which is L times the cosine of theta. So L minus L times the cosine of theta would be the vertical position of the pendulum Y. So Y can be written as L minus L times the cosine, oops, a little bit better, cosine of theta. There we go. Now, the next thing we want to do is find appropriate equations for V sub X and V sub Y. We can say that the derivative with respect to time, so V in the X direction, can be said to be the derivative of X with respect to time, which is equal to X dot, which is equal to the derivative of this. The derivative of L sine theta will become L times the cosine of theta. And the same with the velocity in the Y direction, V in the Y direction is equal to the derivative of y with respect to time, and that's equal to the derivative of this, which is y dot, which is equal to, well, the derivative of l is zero, the derivative of the cosine of theta is a negative sign, that negative will cancel out this negative, and will give us l times the sine of theta. Hmm, now we have, oh, 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 I need to back up, I need to back up. Made a mistake. Okay, I'll back all, all the way over here. Mm. Okay. Yep. Okay, now to find the velocity in the x and y direction, we can do that by taking the derivative of the position in x and y direction. In other words, the velocity in the x direction is equal to the derivative with respect to time of x, which is equal to the derivative of this, which is equal to x dot, which can be written as the derivative of this, which is L times the cosine of theta, times the derivative of the angle with respect to time, which is theta dot which means this can be written as L theta dot times the cosine of theta. We can do the same with the y direction. We can say that the velocity in the y direction is equal to the derivative with respect to time of the position y, which is equal to y dot, which is equal to the derivative of this with respect to time, the derivative of L, which is zero, the derivative of the cosine is a negative sign, which cancels out this negative, which means we have L times the sine of theta times the derivative of the angle with respect to time, which is theta dot, which means that this is equal to L times theta dot times the sine of theta. Now that we go and calculate the kinetic energy, which is equal to this quantity right here, we can now say that the kinetic energy can be written as one half times the mass times V in the X direction squared, which is this quantity squared, is L squared theta dot squared times the cosine squared of theta plus the velocity in the y direction squared, which is this quantity squared, which is L squared theta dot squared times the sine squared of theta. 
Now notice that what's inside the brackets, I can factor out an L squared theta dot squared. So the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times the mass times L squared theta dot squared times the quantity cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta, which of course is equal to 1, which means the kinetic energy cannot be written as 1 half times the mass times L squared theta dot squared. Now we still need the potential energy. Now the potential energy is equal to mg times the height. And in this case, the height can be written as L minus L times the cosine of theta, which is equal to mg times, when I factor out an L, L times 1 minus the cosine of theta. And here we have an expression for the potential energy of the simple pendulum. Now I can go ahead and plug that into my equation by taking the partial with respect to L, uh, I should say the partial of L with respect to X and the partial of L with respect to X dot. Remember that L being the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy is equal to 1 half M L squared theta dot squared minus the potential energy which is MGL and then a minus times a minus would be plus mgl times the cosine of theta. Taking the partial of L with respect to theta. Notice I'm using generalized coordinates theta instead of x or instead of y or another variable. It doesn't matter. This, this particular methodology works for any generalized coordinates. So we can take the derivative of that with respect to theta and notice that there's no theta here, there's no theta there, so it's simply here. That becomes minus mgl times the sine of theta because the derivative of the cosine is a negative sine. I can take the parcel of L with respect to theta dot. That means this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and here we get two times one half, which is one times ml squared times theta dot. And finally, taking the derivative with respect to time of the parcel of L with respect to theta dot which is the derivative of the disk quantity right here, which is equal to ML squared theta double dot, because the derivative of theta with respect to time is theta double dot. Now we can go ahead and plug that into our equation right here. We can go ahead and take ML squared theta dot, ML squared theta double dot, minus the derivative of L with respect to theta, which is right here, it's a minus times a minus, mgl sine of theta equals zero. Now this will cancel out that. We have ml squared theta double dot plus mgl times the sine of theta equals zero. And simplifying this, noticing that we can cancel out an m because we can divide both sides of the equation by m. We can divide both sides of the equation by one of the l's, which leaves us with l theta double dot plus g times the sine of theta equals zero. Now we still need to make one more substitution. Since the angle of theta is assumed to be small, we can say that the sine of theta therefore is approximately equal to theta. So we're going to replace the sine of theta by theta. L theta double dot plus g times theta equals zero. And finally, if I divide both sides by L, I can write this as theta double dot plus g over L times theta equals zero, which is a general second order differential equation that describes the motion of a pendulum. If we realize that omega squared is equal to g over L, because omega is equal to the square root of g over L, I can then solve this equation by saying that theta is equal to some amplitude of oscillation times either the sine or the cosine, sine or cosine, of omega t because it's a function of time and omega being equal to the square root of g over l which is the angular frequency of the oscillation of the pendulum. If you also keep in mind that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency or the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times omega which means that the frequency of the pendulum can be written as 1 over 2 pi times the square root of g divided by l, and that also 
comes out of this equation right here. And that's how we can use a Lagrangian to come up with the general motion of a pendulum in the x and y direction. We get position in the x and y direction. We get velocity in the x and the y direction. We convert that to the general, to the generalized coordinates theta, and then we can use the Lagrangian principle to solve for the equation of the pendulum. And that's how it's done.